G'day guys, welcome back again. I'm gonna try some Liquitex Basics today. I've got these on sale. Normally they're about $11 a tube and they were half price, so $5.50 each. Uh, Boxing Day sales at uh, Lincraft, so yay. Um, I tend to just use my global paint because I use so much of it and it's relatively cheap. I get a two litre bottle for about $16 so um, yeah two litres for $16 versus 118 mils for $11 you can see why I don't use this a lot but I do like it um, it mixes up really thick so I don't have to use as much um, my pouring medium today is 60% glue 30% water 10% flow troll just to see if I can get it to dry a little bit better with the flow troll. Uh, so in here I've got 80 grams of my pouring medium to 40 grams of paint. So it's a two to one ratio. Um, normally when I'm using my global, I do one to one, but this, as I said, it's really, it's quite thick. It mixes up thick and um, it's very highly pigmented. So I don't need as much. You can see it's leaving a trace on the top there. Leaves a little mound and that's the consistency I want. So I've got seven colors. Um, there's 120 grams in each, which is about 840 grams, uh, 28 ounces of paint to cover this. This is a 30 by 60 centimeter, 12 by 24 inch. I've put my little push pins underneath here, my big ones, and I've also put a little bit of puppy piddle pad under that bar there just to stop it from sagging in the middle because my paint's quite heavy. I have a lot of it on there, so that just stops that from happening. I've also got some masking tape. Just regular masking tape on the sides here just to um so i don't have to put sticks there and we'll see how that goes right uh what else do i need to tell you quickly before i start this one i did that was my purple one that i did um with the little bit of flow troll in it and it's drying better than it does with just the glue I haven't got nearly as many little pit holes from the the glue so Happy with that so far. Pop him over there to dry. And I'll show you my lily pond. Lily pond is pretty much dry now. I won't run my hand over it just in case it's not totally dry in the middle, but it's dry on the outsides here. So that's turned out really pretty. My green paw that I did. That's it, right, put that one away. Let's get started. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was just put down a little base coat, and I've done this before. If you've been following me, you'll see I've done this before. Rather than put down a base coat of white paint or black paint or something like that, I just pour on a little bit of flow troll, and it just makes the surface slippery. And that helps the paint to glide a little bit better. So I'm just using my little, my big palette knife. I think it's a cake decorating or cake icing palette knife. I'm just going to spread that as evenly as possible. I'm, it's a bit awkward where I've got things down here and paint up there and I can't really move very freely. But I'll do my best just to get this covered. Don't need to worry about the sides. Just get the surface covered. Now you don't have to do this, but um, you know I do like to experiment, so I'm just going to see if it helps with my my flowing of the paint. See if it flows easier over the edges. Okay, so that's done. Let's just give it a nice smooth surface. If I can, left-handed. There we go. Done. So just a little bit of flow troll. If you don't have flow troll, use some water. I don't think it really matters, just something that's gonna make your surface a little bit slippery, as I said. Um, so when I use my global paints, they're, they're not a professional paint. It doesn't say on them if it's, um, you know, opaque or semi-opaque or transparent like these do. This one, there's a block covered in there, the little square, it's colored in, so that's opaque. Um, so if you've got paints 
that, that have those little squares on them. These are all opaque. Hopefully I've picked something that's, that one's semi-opaque, it's half covered in. So, that one's opaque. I've got mainly opaque colours by the looks of it. I haven't gone by that, I've just um, picked colours. But, if you're using a good quality paint, it will for sure tell you if you're using um, opaque or semi-transparent or etc. So you know if you're getting a good paint or not. The globals don't say that. They're, they're more of a, a student paint, I guess. But for my purposes, they have been fine. Oh, let's add the silicone. Okay, so 120 grams of paint in each. And I'm going to use the treadmill silicone, 100%. And let's do five in each except the black and white. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Skip the black. The black and the white hopefully are a little bit more dense. Uh, and they should hopefully drop to the bottom and allow the cells to pop up through the black and the white and hopefully we'll get black and white rings around the paint because that heavier paint drops to the, the back and the lighter colours will come forward or up to the top and hopefully create the cells. So that's the plan. The plan. Oh no, oh no, don't. I knocked it all over. Oh dear. Hang on, I'm going to have to try and catch some of this paint. Get in there. Oh dear. It's a problem with having so much stuff on the surface here. Scoop it up. Pop it back in. Alright, I'm just going to have to wipe that mess. Bear with me one sec while I tidy up. I know accidents happen, don't they? I might make up a little bit more white because I need it. Clean my mess first so that I don't stand on any paint. Little bits drip down here on my plastic. And there's a little bit on the floor too, so let me get that before I stand on it, eh? Alright, that'll do. I'll clean it up later. Oh, goodness me. All right, let's make a little bit more white paint. Got my little trusty scale. Put the paint on, uh, the cup on, zero it. I'm only going to do, I don't know how much was spilt, it wasn't a lot. Let's do 40 grams. I won't even need that. Let's do 20 grams of that. And then I'll just put in half, so 10 grams. There we go, 10 grams of white. And stir it all about. Mixes in really nicely, it's nice and creamy. The metallics on the other hand are not as easy to mix in. I find I need to put the metallic in a little bit of pouring medium, stir it well, add a little bit more pouring medium, stir it well. Um, until it all combines. It just doesn't um, mix that well. Okay, I think that's about it. They all look very similar. All right, sorry about that, guys. Let's get on to it. Layering. It's a dark blue. That one, I'll tell you about them later. Hey, let's just get on to it. another person on YouTube yesterday comment what did she say you chatter way too much hurry up and get on with it she says okay I said of course anything for you why wouldn't I change what I do just for you complete stranger probably shouldn't have commented but you know I'm not one of these to just Put up and shut up. If I want to say something, I'll say it. Gets me into a lot of trouble though. <laughs> Sometimes I should just put up and shut up, hey? Let it go. I don't know where people are just trying to be 
like trying to get under your skin, trying to be nasty, trying to get a, a bite. I don't know why people, like if you're, not, if you're not happy with what I'm doing, just, you know, don't watch. So I don't know why people make comments like that. Never mind. Moving on. The rest of you are lovely. Appreciate all your lovely comments. Okay, so a little bit of brown in here, just to give it a little bit of a kick because I've got lots of blues. And I've got this sort of, um, this one's called Bright Aqua Green. So a little bit of mainly blues, a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of greeny colour. Back to my blue. Lovely and creamy and velvety this mix today. I don't know whether it's the addition of the flow troll or what it is, but or maybe it's just the the Liquitex paints. Lovely and creamy. Bit of a sheen to them. I think it's probably the flow troll. Flow troll's got a natural sort of conditioner in it that they use. They put it in spray guns and they you know, spray painting houses so that uh, spray guns don't get clogged up. So that's what Floetrol's for. And um, it just slows down the drying time as well so that paint doesn't crack as easily. So traditionally that's, for, that's what it's for, but um, us acrylic pourers have found it. Sometimes I sit, I laugh and I think, all well, those poor people at Floetrol, they can't understand what's happening, why their sales of Floetrol have gone through the roof in the last 12 months. You can just imagine them all sitting around scratching their heads going, what is going on? Why are we selling so much Floetrol? But they have put the prices up. In Australia, that costs $54 now, 54 Australian dollars, which is, it's expensive. I know you guys over in the States can get it for... What about $13, $14? I don't know how come you guys can get it so much cheaper than us. It's the same product. Maybe it's because of the shipping. Maybe it costs more to ship it over here. Not sure where it's made. So maybe if it's made in the US and they have to pay for getting a container over here, maybe that's why it's more for us. I, I don't know. But it sure is expensive, especially the way I go through it. more blue. So my blues are pretty similar. I, I could only find these two blues. One's a phthalo blue and one's a primary blue. So not a lot of difference in them. One, you know, the phthalo blue is a little bit darker than the primary blue. But hopefully it's, it'll still give me a little bit of a different look, little effect. A little bit more white. I'm not planning on keeping any paint for my corners. Hopefully I'll, I'll have enough. With the flow troll on the surface and it making the paint flow a little bit easier, hopefully um, I don't need extra paint for my, my corners. reacting nicely in the cup. I can't see cells but I can sort of see uh, the paint sort of reacting, sort of going a bit crazy in there, a little bit hazy, hazy and crazy. Hopefully we'll get some nice cells. I've used a lot of paint here, as I said it's quite expensive. Um, well I've got it on sale but it's a lot of paint to use and a lot of medium to use and a canvas, so hopefully it'll work nicely for me. I didn't do a practice one, I just went straight to the canvas with the Liquitex Basics because I haven't got a lot of it. I didn't want to sort of waste it doing a little practice pour on my cards. I thought I'll just get straight into it and we'll see how it goes together. I have done pours with the Liquitex Basics before. Uh, you can go back on my YouTube channel and have a look at them. I have done them before, but um, as I said, I don't tend to do a lot of them because it's so 
expensive. And I tend to do a lot of big canvases. This is not big for me. I do huge ones. So I couldn't use that much Liquitex Basics on um, a big one like that. And there's a bar sitting just under there. So the cup's kind of teetering on the top. All right, now while that's sitting there, contemplating what it's going to do, I'll show you the colours. I did spray the um, cups with some silicone oil just to help the paint release, as I tend to do lately. And so, Equitex Basics Titanium White Opaque. That's the primary blue, semi-opaque, uh, light blue permanent, opaque, bright aqua green, opaque. <laughs> There's not many semi-transparents. I don't think I've got any transparents. That one's opaque as well. That's the burnt sienna, a little bit of a brown pop in there. Mars black. There's two blacks that Liquitex Basics make. They do the Mars black and the ivory black. The Mars black tends to be more blacker, I found. The ivory one tends to be a little bit more on the grey side. And that, I'm not even going to pronounce that. I call it thalo. Thalo cyanine. Thalo cyanine. I don't know. Anyway, I call it thalo. Uh, okay. So there we go. Those are our colours. Right, I've got my heat gun ready to go. A little torch, well, not very little, it's quite big. So I'm just going to flip these straight over. Oh, look at that. It's reacting. Strange. All right, let's hope this works. I'm just going to flip them over and make a puddle. Let's go. Oh, pretty, pretty. See how the tape's stopping the paint from running over the edge? Big cells already. Big cells already, but oh yeah, sometimes you know that they're um, if they're big at this stage, then it's a bit um, thin. But anyway, we'll see. Loving that burnt sienna in there, isn't that gorgeous? Let's just do that one that way. Plenty of paint on here. I don't need to worry about saving any of it, and I will need to. Get rid of that down there. My goodness, look how that's reacting. Looks like way too much paint on there, doesn't it? Let's pile these up. I'm not going to need those again, those cups. Wow, lots and lots of cells. Sometimes you don't even need to torch. This this way it may well be just because it's the Liquitex Basics and the... Um, uh, the density of the paint is creating the cells. As I said, the, the heavier densities go to the bottom, the lighter densities come up to the top. I mean, I have got oil in there as well, but I haven't even torched. Look at this, going crazy. I, have seen, I do seem to have too much paint on there. It's, it's pretty much covered the whole thing and I haven't even tilted yet. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm going to torch just a little bit. I'm not going to do that one because there's plenty there. I'm going to do a little bit in here and a little bit on that one. And hardly any, really. <laughs> there, that's enough. We've got plenty of cells on there already. That's amazing. I didn't think it would react that, that intensely. Hmm. I've got this caterpillar thing happening here. I don't get that. Well, I haven't been getting those lately. Maybe it's because I've done two to one on my ratio. Maybe that's why it is a lot thinner than when I'm doing my globals. It's a lot thinner. All right. So I don't have to go to the sides. All I've got to do is up and down and we're going to be done. It's going to be a quick one. Look at these cells. My goodness, they just come up on their own. Haven't tilted at all and there they are. Amazing. It's so different when you use a different brand of paint. It's just so amazing. Now I want to get rid of this section here um, and 
maybe a little bit of that caterpillar. So I'll just let it tilt it a little bit to my left, to your right, and then I can go straight down and get rid of, I want to take that blob off. Here we go. I don't want to lose that little guy because he's cute, isn't he? He's cute. Oh wow, way too much paint. I always use 800 grams on this size canvas. It must just be too thin. I'm gonna have to go again now with the Liquitex, aren't I? And, and make one that's one to one. But those cells, they've just grown. And the flow troll as well makes cells. So the little ones that popped up straight away, they could have been the flow troll cells too. Now we do need to get to that corner. A little bit to that corner, so off we go. The tape's doing its job, it's holding the, the paint on the surface. I'm going to come back again just to straighten up my lines and then I can just go straight down, cover that. Straight over and back. Okay. Oh, what about this guy here? I haven't done that corner. tilt anymore. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of paint with my groovy little spatula. Put it there. Yeah, I'm not really liking this, I must say. Um, yeah. I thought the Liquitex Basics would just be, you know, wow, but not kind of muddied, cells are huge. Let's take the tape off and let that paint just fall over the side. So yeah, not overly impressed with my work today. Let's cover the corners up, eh? Hey? Could well be just because I've done a thinner mix, I've done two to one. That's probably why. Just going to fix these sides up. But yeah, it's not at all what I was expecting, that's for sure. Taking the matching paint that was on there to, to fill in the holes. And a little bit for you. Let's put it on, let it drip off on its own. Don't rub it in. Okay. All right, well, I don't love it. I'm most likely going to scrape it and um, come back to you with... I should have enough paint to do this again. And I'll make it thicker, I'll do a, a thicker mix. Maybe I'll do the one-to-one -one and, and just see how it goes. But I've still got my mound. You know when I was pouring the paint into the cup, I was still getting mounds. I'm going to torch this just to see what happens because I'm going to scrape it anyway. <laughs> We'll get some cell mania happening, hey? Look at that. Look at all those cells. Those people that love cells, they'll probably love it. Mm, me, not so much. I mean, they're gorgeous cells that have just come up. Look at that. So pretty. It's like a little cobblestone. They're very nice cells that have come up. Um, but yeah, oh, look at that. Let's torch again. Let's go crazy with the cells. Let's get our painting full of cells, eh? Let's just go wild. Why not? See what 
happens. Oh, look at them all. That's just, that's just ridiculous, isn't it? Redonculous. My goodness. It certainly is interesting. I'll take you down for a close up so you can see all these little cells. Um, but yeah, it's um, certainly not what I expected, and certainly not what I wanted. them all. Amazing. I'll just take the camera down and show you close up those cells. I mean they're very pretty cells, it's just not at all what I was wanting. I'll zoom out a little bit so it's clear. Okay, going from the bottom left. There's a light shining above. Let's see if I can get rid of it. There we go, it's gone. Okay. Bottom left, going up. We'll come across. So the cell, sh you know, the shapes are really pretty. Um, but See what happens to the cells when there's a lot of them and they all bump into each other. They, they, there's triangle ones and oblong ones because the cells have all bumped into each other and they lose their lovely round shape when you've got background and you've only got a few cells popping up here and there. Um, they stay nice and round but when you've got so many like this and they're all bumping into each other they do lose their, their round shape. So there you go, a mass, a mass of cells. Not at all what I was wanting. Uh, I will scrape this guy and come back to you for another one. Okay, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.